Hey, coming up, a bodybuilder that... <laughs> Like a bodybuilder, his diet has four sticks of butter a day. We're going to tell you all about it. This is uh, there's a name for that, but we can't say it on this show. <laughs> also coming up is a science mystery, as a stingray might have been impregnated by a shark. What? All right, a little bit later on. Katy Perry, she's <laughs> announcing a, a departure from her job. We're also going to find out what she's teasing and what's coming up with her. Daily Flash starts right now. Get ready for trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash with your hosts, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. The fun starts right now. This is Daily Flash. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Jackson. I am Mitch English, welcoming you to Daily Flash. Man, we love having you along. You, it, when, when you're here, it just smells better. I mean, it's so, it's so <laughs> it nice. It does, right? Uh, Matt Doolittle's also hanging out with us. We'll be checking in with him a little bit later on. You know what we need? What do we need? We a good meal? We need Taylor Swift to watch this yes. show and like a post of the Daily Flash. Yeah, well, yeah, that's all we're asking. Just hit, All you gotta do is press your phone and like anything. Or just like us. I think there we really like is something to this Why Taylor so? Swift effect. The Swift effect is what they're calling okay. it, right? So this year's Super Bowl scored 126 million viewers. That's the most eyeballs ever that's for a crazy. Super Bowl show. Last year, I think it was about 115, 116 million. This year's Super Bowl, second only to the moon landing. As far as amazing. how many people were watching. And some people say Taylor had something to do with it. But what I find even more interesting is that she's kind of created this new bond between fathers and daughters. The dad's watching like football. That. The daughter's loving Taylor Swift. So they're finding some common ground and some new things to talk about. I love that. And uh, there's no doubt we were reporting on the fact like when she was touring, what she has actually added to the economy yes. in every single city that she's gone to. And really, it's, people are like, Please, Taylor, come to our city. Please, just show up somewhere, yeah. right? And I, and one thing I love about her is anytime you see her out, whether it's the Grammys or the Super Bowl, she just always looks like she's having the best time ever. I think so. Hey, here's one thing that I can, I can say about her, just know, because I worked in country radio for, for a while. She actually earned it. She would go, yes. her parents, they would, as a young girl, and, and pitch these radio stations with a cassette, mm -hmm. like, hey, here's my music. She did the work. Yes. And it's so good to see kind of like all of that pay off. And I tell you, you know, I don't know her personally, but she seems like she's pretty grounded. Because she's earned sense. it, you know. I think so, and yeah. She's done yeah. the country fair circuit, and she's schlepped, like you said, the cassette tapes at the radio station. I saw the picture, and it was her performing on a flatbed truck in the middle of this lake. <laughs> Nobody Love really in the stories. crowd that says, uh, whatever the name of the festival was, welcomes Taylor Swift. And she was up on stage. It maybe looked like there was like eight people out in the yeah. crowd. And I go, you know what? She earned it. So yep. that, 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 And I would hope that she has that somewhere to remind her, like, yes. hey, this is where it started from. All right. Uh, talking about getting bigger, but maybe getting that way might not be the best way. Mm -hmm. A British bodybuilder is doubling down on his decision to eat a daily brick of butter, all to improve <laughs> his body's function and avoid being hangry. 28-year-old Jonathan Griffiths says that butter is only a small part of his unique eating program. He puts Rocky Balboa to shame by scarfing down one and a half pounds of the, uh, half a pound, uh, half a liter rather, of uh, raw milk, four ounces of cheese, four eggs a day, lots of protein. Jonathan, who weighs in, 242, he's 6'1". He avoids fruits and vegetables altogether. Mm. I'm sure his mom would not be happy mm -mm. about skipping the veggies. He was inspired by the carnivore diet, you think, mm. in YouTube. That was back in 2020. Griffith says that he enjoys melting down a brick of butter and then freezing it. He eats it like most of us would actually eat a big old piece of chocolate. Uh, if he does it, it works, but I can't see it helping his cholesterol levels at all. I, I, you know, too much of a good thing can't be always a good thing, right? right? Maybe he's just got the constitution for it. He has to have something. You know, maybe his body yeah. just responds well to high fatty foods and meat. And That's true. You know, and so it's, and I think by you saying that, should say, mm -hmm. well, if you're wanting to bulk up, maybe butter might not be the best thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like your body might not have that same reaction to it. I've either. seen people put butter in their coffee, I've and I was like, hey, have I missed this they trend? Yeah. Uh, no, here. they they did it to me one time, a long time ago, and we had we had a guy that was working, and he goes, and I should have known because he goes, Mitch, you want some coffee? And I'm like. <laughs> Remember Mike? And I go, Mike, I go, well, thanks, Mike. Yeah, that was great. And uh, and he came back, and, and I was drinking it. It was like, tasted fine. And then he, he and the co-host, they had put butter in it. And in I was like, coffee. it's supposed to give you energy, too, yeah. in the morning. Did it? 
I couldn't tell. You have a lot of energy. energy Yeah. Well, a stingray living in a North Carolina aquarium might have gotten pregnant by a shark. This is so bizarre. Experts say the stingray's pregnancy is a -a once-in-a-lifetime science mystery because there have been no male stingrays in the tank with her, only a young bamboo shark. The staff discovered Charlotte's (laughs) pregnancy after noticing some swelling they thought might be cancer. The aquarium's vet later confirmed the stingray was growing three to four eggs. The aquarium plans to do a series of DNA tests after she gives birth. Okay, so let's say, uh, let's change all the words to this um, because I'm certain this has been used as an excuse (laughs) somewhere. Change the the shark to uh, the bad boy cross town or, you know. uh, I think it's it's amazing. Science um, is is amazing. They're going to happen. This this is actually... Life finds a way. Life will find a way, but what would it would it be a stingray? Or would it be a shark? Uh, that, that's what I I want to see bamboo, what these babies look like. A bamboo stinger, which sounds like a great cocktail, by the it's way. Really You're gonna be a bamboo <laughs> stinger. Like a Shaking bamboo stinger. stinger with one of those umbrellas. <laughs> yeah, with the umbrella. And some uh, Jamaican roll. I, I think we're we're gonna stay on top of the story because we we want to see what comes out. You know, it's if it's a stingray. I or find it very shark. concerning. <laughs> well, she, and she had that, that stingray had such great parents. <laughs> <laughs> and grew up in a great neighborhood and everything. <laughs> I thought she was on the pill. That's, that, that's what she thought, right? And she did too, apparently. She but so, too. <laughs> the, the, if it winds up like our starfish, I would go, hey, look, I want to be at that circuit party <laughs> next time, right? Oh, I just realized what I said. All right, anyway. Katy Perry leaving American Idol. Where are you going, Matt? Uh, the firework hit maker announced news of the- <laughs> Her departure saying the upcoming 22nd season will be her last. Mm. Perry's been on that show alongside Lionel and Luke Bryan uh, since its revival back in 2018 and went over to ABC. That's right. The Daisies hit maker hinted a new music on the horizon, also possibly a world tour. Perry confirmed her departure from the judges panel in a post on Instagram. Perry's exit comes months after sources claimed that she expressed a strong desire to quit Idol after six years on the show. The 39-year-old has long been a subject of several online rants by diehard fans who complain about her provocative and sometimes rude coaching methods. And uh, she's another one that kind of grew up in the music industry. I think she uh, went on the show at a perfect time when Taylor Swift was exploding. She kind of could take a back seat, but Mm -hmm. then also continue to get uh, notoriety being on that show. Yeah, she's terrific. Christian music. Didn't she grow up in a fairly religious household? My understanding, and if somebody knows, tell me a different, but it it was one of those family, traveling family, uh, Christian kind of Uh, uh, groups. Groups, got it. Mm -hmm. Think uh, Partridge family, but kind of gospel music. But my understanding, that's, that's right. Well, before romancing Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey led Catching Kelsey, a 2016 series with 50 women looking for love. It's the Travis Kelsey dating show he doesn't want anyone to see or know about. Well, back then, Kelsey was being pursued by women in the e-reality dating series Catching Kelsey, which critics called pretty rough viewing. He doesn't even look recognizable there. Uh, In a recent Vanity Fair profile on the Chiefs tight end, uh, Kelsey described the show like The Bachelor, except instead of roses, he handed out footballs. And instead of watching, people did not. (laughs) (laughs) So how did he get his own dating show in the first place? Well, despite his current five-year, $46 million contract with the Chiefs, Kelsey admits back in those early days with the team, he was strapped for cash. I mean, think about Mm -hmm. how many football uh, players are out there. Gosh. And you kind of wonder, okay, did that lead him into meeting Taylor and that sort of thing? You know, you know what I'm saying? If you if, if you're a player, you think you well, you're going to be a player. But if you're trying to get into the world of, of fame you, in that manner, I heard that sportscaster Aaron Andrews and um, okay. another gal from Fox Sports set them up. All right, well, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Well, then. There, so, there you but have. you're right. They're all in that entertainment. That's how maybe one Galaxy. with the other. Yeah. And each could help each other. All right, when it comes to tech and cell phones, there's one company that's leading the way, while others use this company's tech to build theirs. What company are we referring to? Samsung, of course. Mm-hmm. Samsung's actually come out with the new S24. It's packed with AI as well. They come in three different models, the uh, Galaxy S24, the S24 Plus, and the Galaxy S24 Ultra. We wanted to put them to test, see how great the phone is. Matt and I, when we were at a CES, had heard about this. We got it routed through so you can kind of see what's on the screen here. But some it's of the cool beautiful. stuff is with that AI. First off, just the look of it, yeah. right? It, it, it's a beautiful looking uh, look uh, camera, by all means. But it's got something that wow. I 
find very um, helpful. You know, sometimes when your phone gets really warm, yeah. really hot, this has something called Vapor 24, which is a kind of a heat dissipation kind of thing. Really? With this camera that you're looking at, which I just pressed the button here, but this camera that you're looking at here is actually yes. can zoom in to 50 megapixels. Oh, goodness. All right, all right, I don't know if Sorry. I want you to zoom in that close. Yeah, we're, we're going to, we'll, we'll find Hugo. There we go, Hugo. There's Hugo. Hi, Hugo. Hey, Hugo. All right, I can turn it to video. And then watch this zoom though, ready? We're gonna count, we're gonna count. Ooh, ooh. Where'd you go? Look, oh, wow. It's so clear. <laughs> that is a zoom. Uh, go, I'm not even zoomed zoom. in the whole way. Try oh to my sit gosh, down. really? Even now, look at that. Good. We're ready for your extreme close-up, Hugo. <laughs> anyway, the S24, this thing is awesome. It's packed with AI features to help you from chatting to taking pictures. Really cool. Winter can be difficult for many people, but there are things we can do to counter the gray days and early darkness. In her new book titled Turn to the Sun, author Brittany Gowen gives some practical advice on how to look to nature, yes, even in winter, to help relieve some of that stress and anxiety. Brittany, welcome to Daily Flash. Thank you, I'm so glad to be here. You say it's important to find unique green spaces anywhere and anytime, please explain. Yeah, I think that many times we can think that we need to be in an expansive landscape to connect to nature. And I think that we can also connect to small pockets of nature, whether it is a planter near a grocery store or in city life, maybe you see plants in uh, a window. And I think that when we connect to nature in different ways, it allows us to bring nature into our daily lives and not just have it be something that we connect to at certain times. So I think that is a, just a nice reminder that we can always have nature close um, and we just have to look for it in different ways and maybe it's in your house plants as well. How can we use nature for stress management? Yeah I think that so stress tends to stick around when we ruminate and when everyone's felt this when you have something maybe that's gone wrong or something that's frustrating and we tend to create this like mental tape that's negative and it's kind of hard to break but when we're in nature and and you're spending time with greenery studies show that we tend to have less rumination we're able to stay present longer um, so that's something that i think is great it's one of my favorite things related to how we can release stress uh, with nature and it just is allowed going outside being in nature and kind of creating that pause and i think that's what nature does it interrupts um, our thought processes and lets us have a positive um, mindset well even the cover of your of your book, uh, Brittany, is just sort of, I get the, ah. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. I was hoping so. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about the relationship between nature and environmental awareness. Yeah, you know, I think that many times what we care about, we tend to want to protect. And I think when we're creating a conscious connection with nature that allows us to have it in our daily lives, it allows us to increase our compassion, our empathy, and reminds us that we're a part of a bigger ecosystem. I know from being in city life, we can get caught up with our man-made world. And if you're not looking for nature, it can feel very distant. So staying connected to nature is a way that I think can, we can work on um, protecting our environment, increasing that awareness. I think everybody talks about meditation and, and so many people think, okay, I'll make it a part of my everyday life, but it becomes a little bit too much. So this might be an easy way to incorporate that into your world, if only maybe for five minutes a day. Yes, and, and that's what I believe in, especially, you know, in city life, big things are rushed. And I think that if you can just take a moment to reconnect with yourself, which is one of the biggest things, and connect with nature and have those moments where you're just coming back to your present moment, you're coming back to maybe what is important to you. And nature, I really do believe, can, can be that resource. Very true. Well, Brittany, some great stuff. The book is beautiful. Turn to the Sun, your guide to release stress and cultivate better health through nature. It's great. It's a wonderful read. I think it would be a great bedside table book, too, because you could just keep it right there. <laughs> yes, that was part of my goal, actually. So, <laughs> Well, you did well, Brittany. Thank you. For more information or how to get a copy of Brittany's book, Turn to the Sun, please visit BrittanyGowen.com. Mitch. Thank you, AJ. Something that we all need, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's this. Well, if you are struggling with inflation and higher interest rates, don't worry, maybe you actually could put your feet to work. There's a recent survey released by Fetish Site, I've been told. <laughs> uh, Fun with Feet revealed that models with square feet are earning about $45,000 a year. 
And those with Greek feet, where the second toe is longer than the rest, could be earning about 43,000 bucks. All right, do you have a Roman feet or a foot rather? That's where the first three toes are of equal length. You could be a top earner on the website because those kinds of feet <laughs> are so rare. What? And if you have the highly common Egyptian foot with a tall, big toe, you might be wasting your time because ain't nobody wants to see your feet. <laughs> Get that toe jam out. Yeah. Uh, and if you got hair growing on your feet, forget it. That's where 96% of Fun With Feet's users draw the line. And why is our camera guys all looking down right now? Like, <laughs> I know, uh, I know. Looking at feet. There's people that like feet, man. I, I, I don't get it. Uh, it, it we have, most people have two of them. Uh, you can look at your own, but there are people that really, really um, uh, fancy those, I guess is the best way to say it. I can't tell you the number of times I've gotten emails from viewers asking if they can send me a pair of shoes. And if, if, I, if, I, if right? I accept, will I take a picture wearing the shoes? It's just the most, <laughs> I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Is there money involved? I, I, well, clearly there, clearly there is. And I guess on the OnlyFans site, there's there's plenty of people that that's all they do. They just show their feet. All right, we're not going to show your feet. I'm gonna, you, no. have, you don't have open toe, but is no. your second toe bigger? My than? second toe is, yes. Mine is too, that I'm thinking. I don't sit there and stare. Everybody's like looking right now. Yeah. And, uh, and, Hey, look, there, there's people that, I guess that's why they call them fetishes. They like to the, the hone <laughs> in on that sort of thing. And, and all they're just showing the feet. Um, and to me, the feet are the most disgusting thing in the world. <laughs> and, right? I mean, because it's yeah. like uh, all the stuff. And like when, uh, when they get all black and dirty and everything, here's the thing, what people don't realize how important, I'm kind of going down a different avenue here, how important it is that there's medicine that, that your body absorbs because your feet are always mm -hmm. so sweaty. Like you can put the medicine on your feet and it'll get into your body quicker. You Essential serious? oils are that way oh. as well. So I think people forget how important the feet are. I don't think about the feet that much. Maybe that's why. <laughs> and maybe I don't want to if I'm... Don't yeah, you wonder? There's people like, out there who really wants it. The thought always crosses my mind: like, how does one stumble into a fetish like this? Yeah. Do they learn it? Do they hear about it and think, "Oh, that sounds interesting," or is it really something that's innate in them that they're just obsessed with feet? I'm afraid to actually start because I'm like, like, right now, and I might be a foot guy. I don't know, man. I don't know. I here's the thing: I've you taken my own foot out of my mouth many a time. <laughs> yeah, this is true. So well, I think we both have on, yeah. on very many occasions. So if that's a fetish, then you know I should be making 45 grand extra. All right, what do you think? Um, don't send us your feet, and don't ask to see Jackson's feet either. But drop us an email: flash at dailyflashshow.com. Welcome back to The Big Show. Andre and Mitch hanging out with you. An apple a day is no longer the preferred fruit for deterring a trip to the doctor's office. No. A New Zealand scientist says that eating a kiwi a day can actually boost <laughs> your mood in just four days. Experts say the fuzzy fruits are loaded with vitamin C, or down there they say vitamin C. Uh, <laughs> a team of kiwis conducted a study, 155 adults. Researchers found that both the vitamin C group and the kiwi eaters group actually reported improved moods, but only the Kiwi group said that they felt an increased self-perceived success. Huh. Scientists chalked up these mental health benefits to the rich uh, vitamin content that the fruit has, and it's cool looking too, and I love Kiwi. I like I, the Kiwi too. Yeah, I can eat it, I can eat it. Golly. And, and, um, it's, and if you have, uh, it's soft, it's softer too. Yeah. So you, you know, if you, got, you don't want to chomp down on an apple, why not? No, do, do that? you eat the fuzzy skin? Yeah. Um, I guess I do, yeah. Okay. I, I guess I do. Is, it, is that my not supposed no, to? No, I think something? you can. I think, you know, there are people that like to eat the whole apple, you know, core included, and some people Ooh, like yeah. to eat lemons with the peel. I, I, I'm always fascinated oh, wow. by that. Those are the weird people. <laughs> Sorry, they're weird. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> uh, many of us are looking for ways to stop using single use plastics like Ziploc bags in an effort to help the environment. Well, contrary to popular belief, these bags can actually be reused and according to Ziploc they can be reused several times. Cool. Experts say you should always clean the bags before reusing them. You can try hand washing them with soap and, and then air drying them. Any bag that had raw meat, fish, eggs, anything spoiled or yeah. allergy related should never Chicken. be reused. In layman's terms, don't be an idiot. Uh, there is no limit to how many times a Ziploc baggie can be used, but storing dry foods and foods that are easy to clean and rinse will be the key to the bag lasting you longer. So I could see all these uh, you know, drug dealers. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, and you know what? We can we can cut off our bottom line by using the, using the like they're gonna sell it. Like, hey man, I'm gonna need I that need bag. <laughs> <laughs> like when you give Tupperware away, <laughs> I'm gonna need that bag back. Is man. it like a can deposit? Yeah, yeah. I'll give you five cents back on your heroin I love deal. I that idea. And get the bag back. Oh my goodness. All right, let's uh, find out. Is it true, oh, Maddie? What do you got going on, buddy? Well, guys, the Grammys were a few weeks ago, and it's a night for the stars of the singing world to get their shiny trophies. And one celeb in particular had a first when Miley Cyrus won her first Grammy. Yay! Yay. Congrats, Yay. Miley Cyrus. Yay. Baby Dolly Parton in, in my eyes. Right. But a video popped up online that had us thinking, is it true she might be in a little bit of danger for the extra security? If you notice her security guard there on her right, um, the video was flipped so you can get a better look at the, the way it's posed, but uh -huh. his hand looks like it doesn't move. Okay. He's got it in the, in the spot of where you would normally hold a gun if you're not planning to shoot, but have it triggered. And then they're also saying the, the position of his arm looks like it might have, it, it's a coat over his other arm or it's an extender where his actual arm is up in the sleeve. Like he's trying to And they're saying how calm he looks. And they're just saying it might be a little different. So uh, it may be a modified umbrella, though it was raining that night, so yeah. all the celebs had umbrellas. But they're just wondering, is this a little extra security for her? Because who knows? She may be in a little bit of trouble and with all the crazies out there. And, um, you know, Taylor Swift just had a guy arrested again for like the fourth or fifth time for stalking. Yeah. So. Is it true she's got a, a revealed uh, bodyguard with her? I, I, Guys, I think it's think? an umbrella. I think because the, that he would have to have planned it out because it was raining yeah. that night. So I say it's just an umbrella. I say it's not a Okay, gun. I'm going gonna go fake You'll arm. Go? I'll go fake arm uh, umbrella as a gun. All right, Maddie? Well, 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 the jury is still out. I think it may be a little bit of both. I think it was some type of tactical thing where they made it work out because they've had a lot of these, uh, the, 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 the crazies going after a lot of the music yeah. celebrities lately. So I think that, the, especially in an open environment with that, like that, where there is a lot of security, but there's a lot of fans in the area, uh, all the stuff Taylor Swift's been going through. She has an army of security guards that go with her. If you've seen her at all the football games and everything, there's four or five guys that are constantly hovering around them because they are so influential you they uh they they're worth so much money and they don't want another unfortunate like john lennon type situation to ever happen just, again so selena. i think they're paying top yeah. dollar selena, for a yeah. lot of those security efforts yeah we, yeah you uh you mentioned selena who by the way her the shooter that used to be a part mm -hmm. of her uh, fan club is actually getting out soon getting paroled, so, right? getting paroled selena so yeah so that. I think they're just being careful, and I mean, if they can afford it, and and they're you know they're insurable assets for you know quite frankly. So the studios and everything are saying, hey, we're going to give you extra security, especially when you're that high level. Uh, Mark uh, David Chapman, the uh, guy who shot and killed John Lennon. I don't know if you saw the documentary this recent came out on, on uh, Netflix. You, you, it's it's you would think you know, granted it was a long time ago, back in the '80s. The, uh, John Lennon was just walking on the street, yeah. and, and he had just left the recording studio and got out of his limo. He went from his limo to his right there in the front door, and that's when it all happened. So I could see, and you can understand the security, but um, a lot of those, they're trained, they're, they're, that's their job, full-time job, they probably are packing heat. Yeah. I, I don't think that umbrella was actually a gun. Though. But if it wasn't, it's a very cool idea. It actually is, isn't it? Yeah, it's like James <laughs> to, Bond. To be discreet, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's very 007, you know, if you're trying to be discreet. But obviously, if there was any sort of, I would think they might have to disclose that. I, it seems like they would have to. Yeah, I mean, especially for the Grammys, if they're yeah. saying, listen, there's a no-weapon policy here yes. altogether, bodyguard or not, you're going to yeah. have to be able to do it. And if we learned anything from from uh, Whitney Houston and uh, Kevin Costner. Haven't we learned anything at all? You should fall in love with your the person you're uh, Can we talk about protecting. how fabulous her hair was, Miley Cyrus? She had that she great did do 80s it. dynasty look. I and loved Matt, it. And Matt said, you know, the because the, uh, her godmother is Dolly yeah. Parton. She had the big old hair. This is Daily Flash with your host, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English, trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash. Hi, everybody. I am Mitch English. And I'm Andrea Jackson. This is Daily Flash, your source for trending news and entertainment. We appreciate you having the TV on. And if mm -hmm. you have Amazon, you probably know, and maybe if you're a Prime uh, member where you can watch TV on, on the Amazon mm -hmm. app, 
Uh, you're going to be paying a little bit more if you don't want to see commercials. Uh, they came out January 29th. You have to pay an extra $2.99 to your Prime membership if you want to be ad-free. Yeah. Well, in California, the, uh, the laws out there, the consumer protection laws that they have, are saying, no, it ain't going to happen. So they're suing $5 million, saying that uh, if you're a Prime member, instead of receiving a subscription that actually included ad-free streaming, mm -hmm. you know, you're getting something much less. Meaning, if you, you know, when I signed up for Prime, uh, it was one tier, but now if I now I have to go up a mm -hmm. higher tier for two ninety nine. They're saying this is actually false advertisement altogether. Still, it seems like we're getting nickel and dime everything. Uh, Netflix now is. Uh, I didn't know this. I, tax. I get tax now. I, I had an email from them in uh, the state that we live in. It, it, you, you can get taxed on your uh, Netflix. Serious? Yeah, it's, I mean you know it's tax or whatever, but it's. Nickel and dime in you all together just to watch entertainment. Now, we signed up for that ad free option on Prime, and I don't know if the ad free stuff doesn't start until January 29th, but we're seeing ads currently, even though we've signed up for this new You would plan. think, yeah, and it, I, I had not heard, I, I knew that they were like a different tier, but then mm -hmm. like you'll watch some programs that have no ads on it, but then mm -hmm. you have some others that do. And uh, I got to tell you, uh, Liza, my wife, she is adamant, like, we can't watch a show without advertisement. I go, honey, that's how I make my money. <laughs> Can we at least watch a few of these it's nice true. ads? <laughs> uh, still, nevertheless, so we'll see where that winds up. It doesn't look like they'll repeal it at $2.99, but uh, it's a small price to pay, I guess, if you really, really want to watch it. Put some on. damper, though, on certain shows when you get used to watching stuff ad-free, because yeah. it really takes the mojo out of I it. I agree with you 100%. <laughs> yeah. Well, a British bodybuilder is doubling down on his decision to eat a daily brick of butter to improve wow. his body's function and avoid being hangry. 28-year-old Jonathan Griffith says butter is only a small part of his unique eating program. He puts Rocky Balboa to shame by scarfing down one and a half pounds of meat, half a liter of raw milk, four ounces of cheese, and four eggs a day. Jonathan, who weighs in at 242 pounds and stands 6'1", says he avoids fruits and vegetables altogether. He was inspired by the carnivore diet on YouTube back in 2020. Griffith says he enjoys melting down a brick of butter and freezing it. He eats it like most of us would enjoy a big piece of chocolate. Let him have it if it's uh, working for him, by all means. But uh, that much butter just does not seem like it's going to be healthy. I imagine any doctor would tell you just the same. But maybe they make butter differently over there. Maybe. Uh, I can't so. imagine his grocery bill. Yeah. I mean, if I'm paying eight bucks for a can of whipped cream. The stuff that guy goes through <laughs> right? on a daily basis, that's a daily basis. The, the money he's safe from not eating fruits and vegetables, I guess. <laughs> on kind of even raw out. meat and cheese and milk. We now turn to As the Waves Turn, <laughs> the favorite soap opera of the sea. And we go to North Carolina at the aquarium there. Actually, mm -hmm. a stingray could have gotten pregnant by a shark which sounds like Come a heck on. of a party. Experts say that the stingray's pregnancy is a once-in-a-lifetime science mystery because there's not been any male stingrays in the tank with her, only a young bamboo shark uh -huh. who was out mowing the lawn, uh, working the pool. He's cleaning, the pool. He's cleaning the pool. Staff discovered Charlotte's uh, pregnancy after <laughs> noticing some swelling. They thought it might have been cancer. The aquarium's vet later confirmed the stingray was actually growing three to four eggs. Wow. The aquarium plans to do a series of DNA tests, and uh, Maury Povich is supposed to show up <laughs> to find out exactly <laughs> what has happened and all that. That is so weird with science, if you think about that. Uh, Jerry, uh, what's his name? Springer. Springer's no, no longer, longer around. This. Yeah, my uh, goodness. And, and you know, if this was like down in Florida or the South, like where we live, it would be more jokes to add on. It's happening in North Carolina. Nevertheless, you know, I guess the, uh, these are animal or you know, mammals or, you know, the stingrays and that sort of thing is that what we don't know about science mm -hmm. still we, and, and what we don't know about the ocean is what even makes you think. Here's my it's question. A crazy world we live in. Is it because they're in captivity that this happened? Because I can't imagine that this would happen in the wild, like in the ocean. Yeah. Would a shark and a stingray get together or would it be like Romeo and Juliet, a forbidden romance? Yeah, I, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> The only time you're going to hear that is like if it's a joke. You know? So, yeah. uh, stingray and a shark Got walk into a uh, underwater hotel, yada, yada. We are going to be working our way back mm -hmm. right to you. Don't you go anywhere. You're watching television's Daily Flash, and we thank you. Welcome back to Daily Flash. I'm Mitch English. If you're one of the millions of Americans on a weight loss medication or maybe even considering talking to your doctor about using one, you're going to definitely want to hear about this. It's great to be here. Thanks for having us. GLP-1s are the newer class of appetite-suppressing medications, which act as a hard reset of sorts for those dealing with imbalances or an unhealthy state. But as Chief Medical Officer of LifeMD, I've seen that 
long-term weight loss is much more than just about shedding pounds. It's about creating a balanced and fulfilling life where all aspects of your health, mental, physical, and social, can thrive. And these medications, they serve as a safe and effective tool for that reset. But there is a recognition within the medical community that they're just one tool. A lot of patients on a medically supported weight loss journey will benefit from two important things, the tools and the support to create a healthier lifestyle. Optavia has helped many develop a healthy lifestyle. It's because it's based in habit creation, but more importantly, it's guided by a coach and a community. Now, when you're on a medically supported weight loss journey, it's important to incorporate healthy eating habits because your appetite might be decreased on the medications. It's important to incorporate a nutrition plan that is adequate in both protein and other key nutrients. Our research also shows that most people, they know incorporating a healthy lifestyle is important. Yet few, only 17% are confident that they can do it on their own. We found that people tend to be more successful when they incorporate the support of an Optavia coach and a community of people going through similar journeys. So for more information, you can head on over to optavia.com lifestyle, and there you'll find more information on our products, our coaching, and how a healthy lifestyle program can complement medically supported weight loss. While parents go to great lengths to protect their children and childproof their homes, they might not realize about the hidden dangers of lithium coin batteries that lurk throughout the home. Emergency medicine physician Dr. Joe Whittington joins us with information that may save your child's life. Hi there, doctor. Good morning, thank you for having me. Lithium coin batteries are those flat round batteries about the size of a nickel that can get stuck in a child's throat if they're accidentally swallowed. They're found in uh, flameless candles, car key fobs, uh, small remote controls, thermometers, and many other items around the house. Yet many parents are unaware of the dangers associated with accidental ingestion. Young children are curious by nature and part of their exploration of the world around them involves placing objects in their mouths. This is particularly dangerous with lithium coin batteries because if accidentally swallowed, they can burn through the surrounding tissue of the esophagus in just two hours, causing a lot of harm. Duracell is the only battery brand that features a non-toxic bitter coating that discourages accidental swallowing. And Duracell's lithium coin batteries with bitter coating have a bitter taste icon and child secure packaging that's nearly impossible to open without scissors, making sure that little hands and little mouths cannot access them. Duracell is on a mission to close the educational gap and remind parents that when it comes to lithium coin batteries, bitter is better. And parents should choose Duracell's lithium coin batteries with bitter coating for their powered devices. There are several things that parents can do to help keep their kids safer from accidental and battery ingestion. First, find which devices in the home are powered by lithium coin batteries and store them out of reach of children. Next, inspect those devices for any that may not have a screw covering the battery compartment and seal them with tape for an added layer of protection. Remove any expired batteries and store them out of reach of children until they can be recycled properly. And if you suspect your child has ingested a lithium coin battery, take them to the emergency department immediately. If you can't drive, call 911 for help. Just look out for Duracell's iconic copper and black packaging at walmart.com and Walmart stores nationwide. For more information, go to duracell.com slash bitter is better for safety resources. Welcome back to Daily Flash. I'm Andrea Jackson. Student loan debt has been a major point of contention and joining us to talk about the very latest developments is Ayelet Sheffi. She's the senior economic policy reporter for Business Insider. Ayelet, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me. So what's the current state of student loans? Yeah, absolutely. So we've seen a difficult time for student loan borrowers over the past you know, a couple of months. Um, federal student loan payments resumed in October after an over three year pause on payments. And this has meant that a lot of borrowers have had to incorporate an extra monthly bill 
into their budget. Um, you know, we've seen the education department and student loan servicers struggling to manage this transition back into repayment. Um, you know, we've seen borrowers getting late billing statements, incorrect billing statements. So this is something that the education department and servicers are working to balance as borrowers are once again, you know, having this extra bill in their monthly budgets right which which everybody sort of knew about ahead of time you know it was put on pause but now we're sort of getting things back to normal will there ever be affordable and easily accessible loans and, and financial programs for students and what about the colleges reducing the rates they charge to get so many of these students in debt Right. So this is definitely something that a lot of lawmakers and the education department have on their radar is working to make these student loans more affordable because, as you said, it is such a burden for borrowers. So we're seeing a couple efforts from the education department side of things. They're working to make a new save income driven repayment plan. And this is something that they've implemented over the summer and they're carrying out different sorts of provisions over the course of the year. And that includes making lower monthly payments for borrowers, along with shortening the timeline for some of these borrowers to get student loan forgiveness. Um, and colleges are certainly also taking this issue into their own hands by implementing more grants and shifting away from student loans completely. So we see a lot of efforts both on the college level and on the federal level to work to make higher education more affordable. But of course, it'll take time and it does depend on resources from Congress, um, you know, just in terms of getting, getting more funding for servicers and the education department to make things, things possible. What's the reaction from graduates and young professionals who've paid back their loans in full or have been responsible in paying them back and then all of a sudden hearing now some loans are being forgiven? I, I think it's a tough pill to swallow if you're seeing some people get their student loans forgiven while others actually follow through. They signed a paper, they agreed to take the money out and pay it back. Mm -hmm. It absolutely is a difficult thing for a lot of people who have paid back their student loans. But I think what we're seeing in the argument for debt relief is that oftentimes we see these borrowers who have paid more than what they owed, and that's due to interest capitalization. We're seeing a lot of times if student loan borrowers might fall behind on payments or they have some sort of personal issue that makes it difficult for them to make those payments, interest is still building. So that means that a lot of times a borrower might only take on you know $20,000 in student debt and have a 50 thousand dollar balance so a lot of people who are pushing for student debt relief are saying that it's simply about making it fair and equitable for borrowers who have paid back more than what they borrowed one last quick question for you on a large scale what's the impact of student loan debt on the economy so I think it's at this point, we're still trying to figure out what the impact of the student loan resumption is having, you know, overall on the economy. But what we've seen is a bit of drawback in consumer spending. So a lot of retailers have expressed concern that, you know, they're not getting the same amount of investment that they were during the student loan payment pause. So it's definitely something that I know a lot of economists are hoping to follow, um, you know, as this student loan payment uh, resumption is going into effect. And, you know, of course, on the other side of things, the student loan payment pause has been, um, you know, people are saying it has been an economic stimulus. So I think we're just going to have to wait and see, um, you know, how the resumption is playing out. Ayala Sheffi, thank you so much for more information on student loans. Head over to businessinsider.com. Mitch. Thank you, AJ. Well, no doubt researchers have confirmed what most of us already know. Those New Year's resolutions, well, they rarely stick. Here's lifestyle editor Joanne Butler. She's got some unique ways all to keep us motivated. Hey there, Joanne. Oh, thanks for having me. Well, for me, it's all about creating a habit and doing something after I do something else. Like after I shower, I'm going to moisturize my skin or after I have my first cup of coffee, I'm going to go for that walk. That just helps me create a routine and then actually stick to it. Uh, of course, when I need a little more help than that or just a friendly reminder or even some inspiration, I leave myself love notes. So don't be afraid to leave a post-it note everywhere. I love these post-it super sticky notes because they stick everywhere shower doors, windows, walls, uh, you name it. And they come in fun colors and they're great for color coding tasks. And then these are a little bit bigger than traditional size, they're four by six. So amazing for shopping lists and meal planning and homework and just if you wanna leave someone a note. Um, and they also have an environmentally friendly option. These are made from 100% recycled paper. Even the packaging is recyclable and they come in these pretty pastels too, which I just love for spring. They have some super organizational tips and tricks on their website too at postit.com and on their social accounts. So definitely follow them at postit.
Next are beauty routines. Uh, you know, I vowed to moisturize and take better care of my skin, which a lot of people have, but uh, most don't uh, realize that their scalp is skin too, and that needs to be taken care of as well, especially this time of year when we bundle up in hats, all that excess sweat and irritation gets, uh, you know, built up in there and it makes you more susceptible to dandruff symptoms. So you need the right shampoo. And this is my go-to to alleviate this uncomfortable feeling. It's head and shoulders bare. It goes really deep to fight dandruff at the source and just refreshes your scalp. And it only has nine ingredients, including the active ZPT, clinically proven to fight dandruff. And it's free from sulfates, silicones, and dyes. Uh, there's bare pure clean for oily hair and scalps and bare soothing hydration for drier. Uh, and it's just nine 99 online and in store at Walmart. So it's a great deal. Now, last but not least, daylight saving uh, is the annual reminder to make sure all of the important things around your house are in check and working, especially the ones that keep us safe, like smoke and carbon monoxide alarms. Well, Kitta is a fabulous brand that has made this a whole lot easier this year. Instead of replacing the batteries in your smoke and or carbon monoxide alarms, you can install this one that has a built-in battery that lasts for 10 years years. It's their smoke and carbon monoxide alarm of smart features. It has a built-in lithium backup battery. It helps keep your family safe even when the power goes out. Plus, you can easily check it through the Kitta Home Safe app when you're not home. Uh, it'll even give you urgent notifications if smoke or carbon monoxide is detected. So just love this. You can get it right at Kitta.com, Amazon, and at the Home Depot. Really a game changer. And there you have it, my spring lifestyle essentials to help you stick to those uh, resolutions and regimens that you made for yourself. Okay, a relationship expert has come forward to say, be wary dating an only child. And why is such? Because I... they say they tend not to prioritize other people because, mm. you know, they sort of, the world revolves around them, so to speak. So there are certain red flags to look out for if they're not making you a number one priority in your life. Maybe that's not a good thing. Oh, is Matt Doolittle an Doolittle. only child? I'm a middle right. child. You're a middle child. KSA Entertainment is proud to produce and provide a robust collection of entertaining, uplifting, and timely content to broadcast, cable, and streaming platforms in the U.S., Canada, and Puerto Rico. KSA Entertainment. On point. On air. Hey, welcome back to Daily Flash. You know, uh, we usually generally kind of like to tell you what's going on. We, I don't know if you're hinted around, but maddie has been traveling, worldwide traveler today. <laughs> uh, back from uh, we did a, We did a quick little trip to Mexico for the family. Well, my soon-to-be family. It's uh, my fiance's brother, sister, her two nephews, uh, all of us six in small little cabins Ooh. with the door in between, all that. Sounds um, fun. But so I found out something about this family. Oh boy. Uh, we did the buffet eating as one does on a cruise <laughs> uh -huh. because just glutton everything, right. you know, drink, eat, whatever. And I got shamed for mixing my meats on my plate. All right, and like I just really? chicken, and steak, chicken steak. You know, you just you just put pile it on. I would. Got it's food shame. I got I food shame. I would not shame. put up with that. I would. Listen, I'm telling you, I run. It was. <laughs> don't do it. I, I put too much money into it already. Uh, but but they, all all the other all five of them all had their their meat separate on different plates, and I'm over there with just a pile. And I, they were like, "You don't do that." I'm like. No. But, well, okay, now you were with a family, so yeah. I can understand, like, okay, you, you're the one that does something different because yeah. you're the odd one. And yeah, I guess it shows you the dynamics of happening in a family, just traditions, that's how it's done, so that's how you think it's supposed to be. But yeah. Leah's never said anything to me like that Oh, before. so she, she, does she, she do that? She does it, but she never shamed me over to her. sister was like, what, you mix all those together? And her brother's like, yeah, you do that? I'm like, wait, what? Well, they're going to make you feel like you're not, um, you know, Good enough. And number one, that's maybe the first step to be able to do that. So keep that now, in mind. Now, I never wanted the sauce to touch my spaghetti when I was about seven, but I've since grown up a little bit more, and I now combine the sauce with I mean, with I the do spaghetti. the whole, just mix everything yeah. together. No, I, like, uh, I don't like anything. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I can handle it, touch it. I do not let it touch. I try not to let it touch, mm -hmm. but I mean, it's not like it, I can't eat it if it does. By all but I will do my salad on a separate plate. I will oh. not mix that on okay. the same plate with the meat. Well, that's tough because the meat's warm and you want your salad yeah. to stay And I don't want the cool. dressing getting into it. But yeah. they did that, and I did not shame ah. them. 
So, well, yeah. I think that's the question. Like, why shame you for that? I don't, they just brought, they just started staring at me. I'm like, why, why, what, what happened? Plus, I'm half drunk. <laughs> you, should, you should pick up the plate and just throw it down. That would have been awesome. That would have been a great start to the Yeah, yeah, thank you, mate. Thank you all for spending time with us. Yes, for more information on anything you've seen on the show, just head to our website, dailyflashshow.com. Before we leave, here are some of the folks that make our show great. Yes. There we go. Y'all take care. Bye, we will everybody. see you when we look at you. Bye-bye, everybody.